So thanks for joining us, Becca. First of all, tell us about Venispace, uh, the company, and, and what your role is there. So Venispace is an independently owned Bournemouth-based service office company. We have three sites in Bournemouth, um, the Lodge, which is la- launching in a few weeks, Veneta House and Wilson House. We also have two other properties in Plymouth and Exeter. So I'm the operations director at Venispace. So day to day, you'll find me working on any projects that we've got going on, as well as dealing with any day to day issues uh, in the group of companies. So going back to those difficult COVID times, what effect did it have on Venispace and, and just what did it feel like at the time for you? Yeah, it's probably quite daunting, like it was for all businesses. Um, But there was definitely positives and negatives. Um, I think, you know, there was a a very short period of time, which obviously we were all staying at home. Um, But obviously, you know, you can't leave commercial buildings empty. So I had many bike rides into town running through the taps and things like that. Um, But there were also businesses that just couldn't work from home, staff that couldn't work from home. So we did find that we did have some clients um, still remaining within our centres that remained open throughout the time. Um, In terms of other services that we offer, we certainly saw an uptake in things like co-working and virtual offices. Um, We did unfortunately lose a few clients, but we went into the pandemic quite strong. We were 100% occupied across most of our sites. So moving to the Bounce Back Challenge grant, uh, the aim from the council was trying to get businesses to do something differently and bounce back really positively out of the pandemic. How did you find out about the grant and, and what were you hoping to achieve? So we purchased the lodge in January 2020, pre-pandemic. At the time, we didn't quite realise how much work was entailed in in the building itself. Um, a lot of the infrastructure of the building had pretty much fallen into disrepair. Um, the main issue that we had uh, was around the, the ornate ceiling. Um, the lodge is grade two listed, so we're under conservation. Um, we needed to uh, make sure that we protect the ornate ceiling in the main hall. However, it was an integral part of the roof which had failed. So as a result of that, we uh, instructed a specialist consultancy to take a 3D scan of the original ornate plasterwork of this beautiful ceiling. Um, and essentially the, the grant enabled us to do that probably quicker um, and, you know, for everybody's enjoyment one, once it's now finished. So talk to me in more detail about the project itself and, and what you hope to achieve there. It was historically a Freemasons Lodge. Um, it's then been several other, other things, um, a soft play cafe um, and a ski centre as well. Um, so we, when we took on the building, um, th- it, it was in a very, very bad way, as I mentioned. Um, but the actual original fabric of the building um, is beautiful. The configuration is two main halls and a basement um, with a very traditional bar. Um, because of the water damage, um, unfortunately, quite a lot of it was damaged beyond repair. However, because of the grant funding, we've probably gone over and above uh, what we've needed to do in terms of replacing some of the the ornate um, the ceiling I mentioned, but also there's a lot of plaster work around the building. And um, without the grant funding, I doubt we'd have taken it that far. The conservation says that we don't need to. Um, but yeah, with with obviously the help from the grant, we've been able to go over and above to really lovingly restore the building. So moving on to the legacy of the project, how's it gone and and where is it now? So the original project and the specification that we were working to um, was that we would transform the halls into two offices. Uh, for two separate businesses. That included installing mezzanine floors um, to maximise the space in the double height uh, halls and then create a basement with a co-working area and event space for all of our clients to enjoy um, in Bournemouth. Um, That was the plan for years um, and just a few months ago we had an inquiry from a global brand uh, looking to relocate to the UK somewhere Um, And based on the quality of the accommodation that we've been able to produce, um, they were very, very happy to sign up um, and have taken the whole building from us. So, yeah, in just a few weeks time, that project will be completed and they'll be moving in. So we've heard about the project, which has brought a historic building in Bournemouth back to life and brought new investors into the region. How did you find the whole process? I found the process very smooth. Um, I think one... uh, definite take that I had from dealing with the council in the the early stages of the application um, is the appetite and interest of people working at the council. Um, Specifically, I remember one one gentleman who was just very inquisitive um, and showed a lot of passion for the project, which, you know, really, really helped in our confidence as well. 
a really good example of how we continue to work with the council um, is I have a close relationship with the eco economic development team um, and I'm working with Chris at the moment. He is helping with the infrastructure um, side of the building. We are trying desperately to get a lease line installed. Um, so we are using um, Chris and his pressures to, to help push that along further. So it, it's always definitely worth speaking with the council to see what uh, influence they can have uh, to push things along and also explore grant funding options. So you've been involved in a project which is pretty integral to the economic development of Bournemouth. What's your view on the BCP region and its immediate future? I think there's some very interesting people that are doing very interesting things in Bournemouth. We have such a brilliant business community, some very creative companies out there doing amazing things. And I think, again, it will come down to those ideas being given the correct support is we've got Bad Hand Coffee, they've transformed their um, their warehouse and their workshop, which is amazing. Um, there's some really lovely pubs and breweries along the road. And I think that investment encourages other businesses and other property owners to also invest in that area, um, all for the benefit of visitors and people that live here. So looking back to the beginning of the process and all of the things that we were trying to achieve with the Bounce Back Challenge Fund, what do you think would have happened to the project if the grant didn't exist? I think the project would have probably been simpler. Um, we were able to do a lot more with the um, ornate and more beautiful aspects of the building because of the grant funding. Um, obviously, the ornate ceiling and the fact that we had the 3D scan and we have replaced and replicated it like for like, um, which really makes it beautiful for everybody to enjoy. Um, but we've almost taken that further. We've been able to do a lot more of the plaster work. We've been able to use a lot more um, heritage colours and designs, aspects, as well as uh, obviously injecting the modern, which you'd expect to see in a modern office space. So Bournemouth's a pretty unique place. We have a, a mix of, of heritage and, and new sun, sea and business. How important do you think that mix is to its economic future? I think it's hugely important. I think for everybody that lives in Bournemouth, they appreciate the history. Um, and I think by restoring these buildings and, you know, get, putting them to a different purpose, uh, bringing new people in, younger people in, um, I think it, it, it does nothing but good things for Bournemouth. So how did you find the interaction with BCP Council and what advice would you give to others? So I think probably signing up to the business section of the emails um, is a very useful way to get relevant information. Uh, it's within my interest to know what's going on with local businesses, um, but obviously it was an added bonus to receive the news that, you know, grant funding was available to businesses like ours. 